Hello everyone. Now before we start the video I've been asked to show how to do lavender cuttings. So we'll just do that and then we'll go straight into the video. Okay. Here they are look. I just cut these off this morning. So it's just the very like the normal softwood cuttings but you can see all these little growths at the side so we'll just cut those off I'm actually using the Falco grafting knife it's very sharp so it'll be good for this and we can just take those off look don't want those on because that's where we want the roots to come from and we'll take these leaves off we'll take that one off as well and that one so we're actually we might have to take that one while we're there we're actually bearing the stem but we're not breaking off the leaves so we take the the base of the leaf away from the stem then it's just a cut just to square it off like that into the water into the rooting powder, any rooting powder will do, or liquid and then um, we pop it into the compost. Now the compost has got a lot of perlite in it because it needs to be open compost. If it's, uh, it's too stodgy they won't root. You can see where that's holding up now, that will soon break open and grow. Right, here we go then. You can see the node there, that's where we'll work from, just there. So these will want removing. That's it. Take that one as well. And that one. We'll just take that leaf. They're a bit dirty because they've been in that bag, but they'll be fine. Now if you remember, we're going to work for this node just here, so just below and cut. Same again then in the water. There's no need to remove any of the top on lavenders. And in there. And then into the compass. There you are, look. That's a good one for showing. And just move that. In fact, that one's better. Make sure you're nice clean by the way. There's the node we're going to cut up there a lot. So what we'll do, we'll just whip those off. Just clean them off. I think there's one more ought to come off like this there. Uh, then, can you see that node? And we'll just take that off. There we go, in the water, into the powder, and we'll pop it in. I shall finish this tray and then I'll put I'll put one of these plastic covers on it, water it well, then put the plastic cover on. They'll keep it nice and moist and warm in there, even in the bright sun. If it does get any brighter than this, we'll just put a little square of fleece over it, just to... But we've got this mesh on here, so it's not so bad. I'm going to say, if you're in bright sun, put a bit of fleece on them. And that's... Uh, I'll finish those, and we'll show you in a week or two when they've all rooted. And then we've got to find somewhere to put Now we'll go on to this week's video. Hello and welcome to another week in our garden. Wonderful weather, sun's out, it's beautiful. Happy Easter to everyone. Not too many Easter eggs I hope. And this week I'll just show you how I'm progressing putting the tunnels up. I'll need two more up and then I'll put all the covers on at once. We'll just show you the progress of the arches I shall nearly finish, I've got two more to timber up and then I'll put all the covers on at once 
and then we'll show you it ready for planting and then we'll go and put the first early potatoes in and then we'll nip in the greenhouse and I'll just show progress of the peas and beans we put in. These are the first early potatoes. We're going to put one row in for now. These are Rocket. And as you can see, they're, they're sprouting well. But I'll show you what to do where before I put them in because I shall reduce that to three three on each. Now what to do I put the canes in where I'm going to put the rows of potatoes in this case on this particular plot there'll be five of them. Then I put the line on and just take out a trench and then where you can see I've dusted it I dust it first with bone meal, quite a bit, don't skimp on it, and this will release some nitrogen for them, that should be enough in there. And then when I put the bone meal on, I just put a sprinkle of blood fish and bone in there, just to, because bone meal is nearly all nitrogen and this is all three. NKP. What I should do now, I should space the potatoes out, then rake that back in so it's level, and then take the next trench out. Now, as you can see, they're sprouting well, and I'm looking for three. Well, that one's only got three anyway, so we'll put that one near the center of the near the centre of the trench as you can see all the potatoes have been graded before we bought them that one's only got one maybe two on so we'll put it in the centre again now this one which is rather large it's got four on so that one I take off and just leave three on and then again two off the centre because I want to put two in there you see now you're spacing first any early is 18 inch thing go about 18 inch apart when we put the late potatoes in I should put those at two feet apart so there's plenty of room for them these are quite quite quick so we'll have these out loads of spots on this one look so we say one, two, three, we'll take that one and that one off. That can go in. So on our reckoning, about there, same again. There's one, two, three, four, five on that one. So we pick three of the biggest. That's a good one there. So we we'll take those two off and we'll put that in. And this one, it's got four, five actually. So we'll take, leave three of the big ones on. That'll do. And we'll put that there. I'll just finish that in and then I'll show you the back fill. Now I've got all the potatoes in and I've took the line off, made sure we've got canes in at each end. And now I start to pull the soil back onto the potato it mixes as they go down it's a bit of good soil this is got plenty of fertilizer in it and manure we should have half a decent crop out of it just a light tap don't bang it down too much I was going to plant some of the other ones up as well but the soil is so hard I'll have to wait for the rain to soften it. There's a fair bit of straw in it but that'll do it good.
just keep raking in loads of worms in it there's manure from earlier on when we dug it in plenty of straw it's still a bit on the lumpy side but that'll be Just a little tap, level up. Wind down up, get that out. Right, I've leveled it off. And rate it sort of roughish, but it should be fine. Now, normally I ridge them up now, but when I ridge them up, you'll find that you have potatoes coming out the side of the ridge and everywhere. So now I'm going to leave them to come up something like straight. And because the weather's still a bit iffy, any potatoes that come up, I should just ridge the soil over them just in case there is a frost and that will protect the potato tops. Right, that's the line on. Now I should tread on the mats to save pushing the soil down tight and dig the next trench, then again, then again. The last trench we'll do it from the path again which is, makes life easier. Now it's quite warm at the moment. I will put at least two more rows in later on today while when it cools down a little bit but the other plots especially these two will have to wait till the rain comes so i can break the tops down when it has rain i should just rake this over lightly again just to break these lumps up a little bit and so this one will be the first earlies hopefully that one over there second earlies and main and this one will be main but as you can see there's a few cabbage yet to, to go and then that's got to be dug and manure it's quite a bit of work but that's how we're doing with the potatoes remember your first earlies 18 inch perhaps a little bit less no less than 14 inch and your main crop two foot and at least two and a half feet between rows giving plenty of room to get growing now we'll just pop in the bottom greenhouse and we'll show you how the beans and peas but all the seedlings are progressing in this uh, frame here it's only insect mesh but i put two layers on it just to give it that little bit more these are the plants that are now waiting to be planted. Most of these will be planted next week with you. Um, I'll just go to, and the, there's the broad beans. There's only one line to put in, but that's fine. There's the mini coals there. Look, that's the mini coal cabbage, very nice, very small cabbage. They're the Brussels, they'll go into that tunnel. There is a few more wanting, just haven't got enough. And these here are broccoli, green and calabrese. They'll go into the other frame that I haven't even built yet. So, And then the beetroot, we've got quite a bit. Look, we've got some more over there. As soon as the beetroot's hard enough a little, we'll put it under the arch tunnels, you know those green arches that we've got, I'll make a tunnel out of those, just basically to keep the birds off more than anything. And it will give them that little bit of protection as well, in case there is a late frost. But all the beetroot can go in as well. 
of red lettuce there that can go in a tunnel somewhere these shallots are doing quite well now there we had a few too many to put in that tunnel with the garlic so I dropped them in here and there's still five more over there to find a home for yet but they're doing okay now these are all the peas and the beans that we set all coming up nicely the ones where none showing yet they are just lifting the heads up so they will fill up if the big leaves like these cocoa de pampo they will lift the compost up with them while they're going it doesn't it makes you wonder whether they're going to do it so what i do obviously i shouldn't do it while it's the sun's on but if you pour plenty of water on them can you see the compost is actually going down off the off the beans if you leave it the compost will dry out and it will stay on and it will be up here somewhere these are the cobra they're doing well i've been putting quite a bit of water on those because it did lift all the compost up tomatoes have doubled in size since you last saw them i think we got the second set of tomatoes you remember some didn't germinate so i reset them courgettes are those there three six seven eight got those coming up these were the squashes and i was a bit concerned because they're not coming up so what i did i reset them and they're here they'll soon germinate squashes these are the peppers we finally got some through they've been hard work this year you cannot grow peppers in a greenhouse with no heat but we've learned we put them in the house they've come up nicely second set if you remember of the tomato sun gold the others didn't come up very well so we reset that's got a weed in it there not we'll take that out everything else is coming well cucumbers are now on their second leaves lettuce nearly ready for Diane to take one or two carrots still waiting but they'll be fine the sweet corn this is gold crest they was all bending over if you remember but they're all stood up now they'll want to go into that frame as soon as the room just harden them off a little but beware the frost they don't like to be too cold that's the progress of the plants in the greenhouse i've nearly moved all the plants up to the top greenhouse as soon as i've sorted it out i'll take you in and show you what it's like in there at the moment it's very congested as you can imagine now i do have my marigolds to put in yet I just put the dwarf ones in and then plant as many as I can on the vegetable patch especially around the cabbages and the tomatoes that keeps the green fly away and it does work I assure you it does work and also gives the insects something to go on talking of insects the rosemary is in flower now lovely blue flowers and what I've found is there's loads and loads of bumblebees on them which has made me quite happy to see those I haven't seen a lot of the honeybees yet but it's a little bit early and I haven't as yet seen the aphid but I don't want to see the aphid but I'll enjoy the bumblebees now that'll be it for this week thank you for watching Thank you for subscribing, we do appreciate it. And hopefully we'll see you next week and we'll try and get some of those cabbages in to the tunnels once I've put the mesh on them. So we'll see you next week. Take care everyone. Bye now.